there are ways that people who have maybe a, a stronger ecological background are starting to think about design, and there are some ways that people who have a design background are thinking about ecology. I'm about to meet with Taylor, who's getting a BA in Environmental Studies at the Eugene Lang College of Liberal Arts, as well as a BFA in Product Design at the Parsons School of Design. He's combining both of these fields to focus his work on urban ecology. Can you tell me about how you're in two different programs? Yeah, so the New School has a cool dual degree program. It's a five-year program. You get a BFA from Parsons and a BA from Eugene Lang. I think it's beneficial to have an undergraduate degree in both tracks. One of the exciting things about the environmental studies program is the option for students to bring the design skills that they have, that they're getting through Parsons, into the liberal arts space that uh, we have through the Lang program, and then use them in an active research lab, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting way for me to actually put these skills to actual practice. I've been looking at areas in which there's either road infrastructure or railway infrastructure or here some, some kind of existing green infrastructure that's already present that could be fleshed out a little bit more. You're calling this connect the dots um, in order to connect green spaces. What is the importance of connecting green spaces in an urban landscape? It increases the health, I think, so to have, them, to have a better connectivity between patches would ultimately increase the health and ecological productivity of each one of them because you have species flows. Plant species obviously don't move by themselves, they move by reproduction. So thinking about how a plant might move through the city. All of these isolated patches, they may not be larger than they were before, but they'll be more connected. And in that sense, the larger population of all of these patches becomes one large green urban patch across the city. What might a crosswalk look like if it were optimized for non-human species? Um, right here, especially in intersections like this where several roads come together, it's kind of an opportunity. You have these little corner parks. Even these cobblestone areas right here don't have to be cobblestones, or they could be more integrated even with greenery in between. Functioning healthy ecosystems are actually beneficial in storm resiliency or in heat wave resiliency, or actually they end up having economic benefits. And so the idea is that we're coming up with or looking at ways that you could make an economic benefit out of an ecological benefit as well. So what's the value in terms of cooling the city? What about in terms of coastal protection? Post Sandy, we realized that loss of wetlands is now a problem, that we actually want to build some of those wetlands back. At the beginning, it's hard to imagine connecting these patches in Manhattan because it's such a dense city already. Um, so part of, I think part of the project has been to, to challenge the precedent of what a connected green space looks like. <laughs>